Hey guys, so today I'm going to be reading you guys the 12th chapter of Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, chapter 12. We were pretty miserable that night. We camped out in the woods, 100 meters from the main road, in a marshy clearing that local kids have also been using for parties. The ground was littered with flattened soda cans and fast food wrappers. We take us of food and blankets from Auntie M, so we didn't dare light our fire to dry our damn clothes. The Furies of Medusa had provided enough excitement for one day. We didn't want to attract anyone else. We decided to sleep and shift. I volunteered to take first watch. Annabeth curled up on the blankets and was snoring as soon as her head hit the ground. Grover fluttered with his flying shoes to the lowest bough of a tree. Put his back to the trunk and stare at the night sky. Go ahead and sleep, I told him. I'll wake you up if there's trouble. He nodded, but still didn't close his eyes. It makes me sad, Percy. What does? The fact that you signed up for this stupid quest? No. This makes me sad. He pointed at all the garbage on the ground. And the sky. You can't even see the stars. They've polluted the sky. This is a terrible time to be a s- s- satyr. Oh, yeah. I guess you'd be an em- environmentalist. He glared at me. Only a human wouldn't be. Your species is clogging up the world so fast. Ah, never mind. It's useless to lecture a human. At the rate things are going, I'll never find Pan. Pam? Like the cooking spray? Pan, he cried in technically. Pan. The great god of Pan. What do you think? I want a searcher's license for it. The strange breed rustled through the clearing, temporarily overpowering the stink of trash and muck. It brought the smell of berries and wildflowers and clean rainwater. Things that might have once been in these woods. Suddenly, I was nostalgic for something I'd never known. Tell me about the search, I said. Grover looked at me cautiously, as if he were afraid I was just making fun. The god of wild places disappeared 2,000 years ago, he told me. A sailor off the coast of Ephesus heard a mysterious voice crying out from the shore. Tell them that the great god Pan has died. When humans heard the news, they believed it. They've been pillaging Pan's kingdom ever since. But for the satyrs, Pan was our lord and master. He protected us in the wild places of the earth. We refuse to believe that he died. In every generation, the bravest satyrs pledged their lives to finding Pan. They searched the earth, exploring all the wildest places, hoping to find where he's hidden and wake him from his sleep. And you want to be a searcher? It's my life's dream, he said. My father was a searcher. And my uncle, Ferdinand. The statue you saw back there? Oh, right. Sorry. Grover shook his head. Uncle Ferdinand knew the risk. So did my dad. But I'll succeed. I'll be the first searcher to return alive. Hang on. The first? Grover took his reed pipes out of his pocket. No searcher had ever come back. Once they set out, they disappeared. They've never seen alive again. Not once in a thousand years? Two thousand years? No. And your dad? You have no idea what happened to him? None. But you still want to go, I said amazed. I mean, you really think you'll be the one to find Pan? I have to believe that, Percy. Every searcher does. It's the only thing that keeps us from despair is when we look at what humans have done to the world. I have to believe Pan can still be awakened. I stared at the orange haze of the sky and tried to understand how Grover could pursue a dream that seemed so hopeless. Then again, was I any better? How are we going to get into the underworld, I asked him. I mean, what chance do we have against a god? I don't know, he admitted. But back at Medusa's one, you were searching her office. Annabeth was telling me, oh, I forgot. Annabeth will have a plan all figured out. Don't be so hard on her, Percy. She's had a tough life, but she's a good person. After all, she f- forgave me. His voice faltered. What do you mean, I asked. Forgive you for what? Suddenly, Grover seemed very interested in playing notes on his pipes. Wait a minute, I said. Your first keeper job was five years ago. Annabeth has been at camp five years. She wasn't. I mean, your first assignment that went wrong. I can't talk about it, Grover said. And his quivering lower lip suggested he'd start crying if I pressed it. But as I was saying, back at... Medusa's and I agree that there's something strange going on in this quest. Something isn't want to see. Well, duh. I'm getting blamed for stealing a thunderbolt that Hades took. That's not what I meant, Grover said. The fear, the kindly ones were sort of holding back, holding back, like Miss Dodds at Yancey Academy. Why did she wait so long to try to kill you? They're on the bus. They just weren't as aggressive as they could have been. They seemed plenty aggressive to me. Grover shook his head. They were screechy at us. Where is it? Where? Asking about me, I said. Maybe. But Annabeth and I, we both got the feeling they weren't asking about a person. They said, where is it? They seemed to be asking about an object. 
That doesn't make sense, I know. But if we misunderstood something about this quest, we only have nine days to find the Master Bolt. He looked at me like he was hoping for answers, but I didn't have any. I thought about what Medusa had said. I was being used by the gods. What lay ahead of me was worse than petrification. I hadn't been straight with you. I told Grover, I don't care about the Master Bolt. I agreed to go to the underworld so I could bring back my mother. Grover blew a soft note on his pipes. I know that, Percy, but are you sure that's the only reason? I'm not doing it to help my father. He doesn't care about me. I don't care about him. Grover gazed down from his tree branch. Look, Percy, I'm not as smart as Annabeth. I'm not as brave as you, but I'm pretty good at reading emotions. You're glad your dad is alive. You feel good that he's claimed you, and part of you wants to make him proud. That's why you've mailed Medusa's head on to Olympus. You wanted him to notice what you've done. Yeah? Well, maybe satyr emotions work differently than human emotions, because you're wrong. I don't care what he thinks. Grover pulled his feet up on the bridge. Okay, Percy, whatever. Besides, I haven't done anything worth bragging about. We barely got out of New York, and we're still stuck here with no money and no West. Grover looked at nice guy and, and like he was thinking about the problem. How about I take first watch, huh? You get some sleep. I wanted to protest, but he started to play Mozart, soft and sweet. I turned away, my eyes thinking. After a few bars of piano c concerto number 12, I was asleep. In my dreams, I stood in a dark cavern before a gaping pit. Gray mist creatures turned all around me, whispering rags of smoke that I somehow knew were the spirits of the dead. They tugged on my clothes, trying to pull me back. But I felt compelled to walk forward to the very edge of the Chasm. Looking down made me dizzy. The pit yawned so wide and was completely black. I knew it must be bottomless. Yeah, I had a feeling that something was trying to rise from the abyss, something huge and evil. The little hero in the muse voice echoed from down in the darkness. Too weak, too young, but perhaps he would do. The voice felt ancient, cold and heavy. It wrapped around me like sheets of lead. They have misled you, boy, he said. Barter with me. I will give you what you want. A shimmering image hovered over the void. My mother, frozen at the moment she dissolved in the shower of gold, her face was distorted with pain as if the minotaur was still squeezing her neck. Her eyes looked directly at me, pleading, Go. I tried to cry out, but my voice wouldn't work. Cold laughter echoed f from the chasm. An invisible voice pulled me forward. It would drag me into the pit unless I stood firm. Help me rise, boy. The voice became hungrier. Bring me the bolt. Strike a blow against the treacherous gods. The spirits of the dead whispered around me. No, wake. The image of my mother began to fade. The thing in the pit tightened its unseen grip around me. I realized it wasn't interested in pulling me in. It was using me to pull itself out. Good, it murmured. Good. Wake, the dead whispered. Wake. Someone was shaking me. The eyes opened and it was daylight. Well, Annabeth said... The zombie lives. I was trembling from the dream. I could still feel the grip of the chase and monster around my neck. How long was I asleep? Long enough for me to cook breakfast. And they tossed me a bag of nacho flavored corn chips from Auntie M snack bars. And Grover went exploring. Look, he found a friend. My eyes had trouble focusing. Grover was sitting cross legged on a blanket with something fuzzy in his lap. A dirty, unnaturally pink stuffed animal. No. It wasn't a pink stuffed animal. It was a pink poodle. The poodle yapped at me suspiciously. Grover said, no, he's not. I blinked. Are you talking to that thing? The poodle growled. This thing, Grover said, is our ticket west. Be nice to him. You can talk to animals. Grover ignored the question. Percy, me, Gladiola. Gladiola, Percy. I stared at Miss Fisher. She cracked up at this practical joke they were playing on, but she looked... Deadly serious. I'm not saying hello to a pink poodle. I said, forget it. Percy Animus said, I said hello to the poodle. You say hello to the poodle. The poodle growled. I said hello to the poodle. Grover explained that he come ar across Gladiola in the woods and they struck up a conversation. The poodle had run away from a rich local family who posted a $200 reward for his return. Gladiola didn't really want to go back to his family, but he was willing if it meant to help Grover. How does Gladiola know about the reward I asked. He reads the signs, Grover said. Duh, of course I said. Silly me. So we turned to Gladiola, Animeth, explaining her best strategy voice. We get money and we buy tickets to Los Angeles. Simple. I thought about my dream. The whispering voices of the dead. The thing in the chasm and my mother's face. Sh shimmering as it dissolved in the cold. 
All that might be waiting for me in the west. Not another bus, I said wearily. No, it had to be green. She pointed downstairs toward train tracks. I hadn't been seen last night. There's an Amtrak station half a mile that way. According to Gladiola, the westbound train leaves at noon. So that was Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, Chapter 12. So this is a summary. Back in the woods, Percy, Adams, and Grover, the rest of the nights will rest for the night. While Percy seems to learn that in order to earn a searcher license, Grover must find Pan, the god of all places. To the satyrs, Pan is their master who once protected the earth. Although legend says that he died, the satyrs refuse to believe he has gotten and many dedicate their lives to finding them. Although none have survived the search, Grover says that despite the risk, he still desperately wants to search for Pan to restore the Earth's goodness. On this part of the trip, Percy also discovers that Grover was the keeper for Anne but five years ago when he failed, but she forgave him. Grover stops Percy from asking more questions about that quest instead of how he and Anne would think this quest is different because the monsters seem to be holding back from attacking them while they look for something. The next morning, Percy meets Gladiola and Percy Pink Poodle. They collect enough money to buy train tickets by returning gladiators owners so today i'm just going to be telling you guys about the different greek gods because they're going to keep appearing throughout the book and i just don't want you guys to be confused so right now there are 12 gods there's obviously poseidon which is the dad of percy He's also the god of the sea. Hera, who will appear later, um, is the goddess of youth. Zeus, which is obviously like the big, big god. He's the god of lightning. Demeter, the god of wheat. Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty. Dionysus, which is, as you learn, the camp director, the god of wine. Hermes, the god of travel. Apollo, the god of sun. Artemis, the goddess of the moon. Athena, which is Annabeth's mother. She is the goddess of wisdom. Ares is the god of war, and he... Festus, Hephaestus is the god of Hephaestus is the god of forges, and yeah, that's it for that's it for today, guys. Thank you.